Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. Here in Dentistry, I make videos on dentistry and dental related topics and make these topics easier for you to understand. So if you like my work, please do consider subscribing and also click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I upload a new video. So today we'll be talking about how the surveying is done and what is tripoding. So stay tuned. So now let's see how to survey the cast. The base of the cast should be flat and it is placed on the surveying table and it is secured with the locking arm. Okay. Now to begin with, ensure that the occlusal plane of the cast is parallel with the base with zero degree tilt. Initially, we place it with zero degree tilt and it should be at the level to the table. So to survey the cast, we start with our first surveying tool that is our analyzing rod. And the surveying arm is allowed to move up and down contacting the cast. So the surveying arm can move up and down contacting the cast and analyzing rod analyzes the all the areas of undercuts or height of contour of the cast. Now with this, we examine the proximal surfaces of the abutment teeth for potential guiding planes. Now, this will give us an idea about the degree to which the area might need modification to achieve parallelism. Now, you all must be wondering what is this guiding plane. We know that we have to create parallelism so that our RPD can easily glide as it is inserted and removed from the mouth. So, to create this parallelism, the axial surfaces of the abutment teeth are prepared such that they are parallel to each other and provide an easy path of insertion and removal. That is, they are parallel to each other and also to the path of insertion. And they should also curve buccolingually to form the normal contour of the tooth. So, these guiding planes are prepared on the axial surfaces of the abutment teeth. Now, after examining the proximal surfaces of the abutment teeth, we will examine the facial and lingual surfaces of the abutment for potential areas of retention. Here, we provide the retentive components of the cast partial denture. And then the cast is examined for any interferences to the placement and any other hard or soft tissue undercuts like bony exostosis, undercuts, tori, etc. And these soft tissue undercuts should be removed during pre-prosthetic surgery. Then the undercut gauze is used to measure the potential areas of retention. The shank of the tool touches the height of contour. And remember, it is not always measured at the gingival crevice, but at the level we plan to place the retentive terminal of the retentive arm. Now, when we measure with the undercut gaze, this tells us about what material is to be used. As more flexible material is used to engage the deeper undercuts, so, the alloy to be used for the cast partial denture or for the retentive component is based on this measurement that we get from the undercut cost. So, this is why this step is important. Now, after surveying for guiding planes, retention and interferences and aesthetics, we draw the survey line on the tooth marking the height of contour for which carbon marker is used. A survey line is drawn on each abutment tooth across the entire circumference of the tooth. You can also use it to mark the bony interferences that may provide as the area of interferences. If there is no height of contour, then there is no undercut to place the flexible part of the clasp. In such cases, a small depression can be created to engage the flexible part of the clasp. Now, how will we create this depression? Now, this can be done either through enameloplasty or by recontouring the tooth with a crown. And any other undesirable undercut should be blocked out to avoid interferences using wax or block out material. I have also discussed separately about the favorable and unfavorable undercuts and their importance. And I highly recommend you to check that in my previous video about the surveying and the surveyor. So do check that. Now moving on. Then we determine the parallelism of the abutment teeth. The path of insertion of the RPD should be parallel to the long axis of the abutment teeth for the easy insertion and removal of the denture. And it can be established by contouring the enamel surface like we discussed for the guiding planes or by placing restorations on one or more tooth. 
or the cast can be tilted on the surveying table to a certain degree so that the long axis of the abutment teeth is parallel to the vertical axis. But remember this tilt gives the angle of path of insertion of the denture that is it will change the path of insertion. Now we can tilt the cast according to the undercut that we need to eliminate. So we can tilt the cast either anteriorly or posteriorly or right or left lateral directions. So you see tilting the cast will delineate some undercuts that is it will eliminate some undercuts that will be against the tilt and it will create some other undercuts that will be towards the tilt. So tilting should be done cautiously and the tilt should not exceed more than 10 degree. Because if it exceeds 10 degree the designed RPD will require excessive mouth opening for the insertion. So this is how we survey the cast and determine the path of insertion of the RPD. Now by maintaining this tilt determined by the primary cast, the angle of path of insertion is maintained. But we have to ensure that every time we remove and replace the cast on the surveyor, it is placed on the same tilt that we achieved and that this degree of tilt is also achieved in the master cast. So to ensure that we place that object in a particular position, we can mark certain points so as to ensure that the object is placed in the same position. Similarly, to ensure that we place the cast and this tilt is preserved, three different widely spaced out points of a single plane are marked on the cast and this is called tripoding. So how we do tripoding? First of all, the carbon marker is fixed to the mandrel. So this is the mandrel, this is the surveying arm and the carbon marker is fixed to the mandrel and the height of the horizontal arm is adjusted such that the carbon marker touches the cast on the lingual surfaces of the cast that is behind the teeth and then the horizontal arm is locked so that the tip of the carbon marker lies on the single plane and the point on the cast where this carbon marker's tip touches the cast is marked on the cast. Now as the surveying arm is moved, two additional points that come into contact with the carbon marker are also marked. So we'll have three marks on the cast that are widely spaced but are in the single plane. Or alternatively, three vertical widely spaced out lines can be marked on the base of the cast using the same procedure. After tripoding, additional reference points can also be marked on the cast using the same procedure. Commonly used additional reference points are distal marginal ridge of the first premolar, incisal edge of the lateral incisor and lingual cusp tip of the first premolar on the opposite side. Now this is done because these reference points are located on the distinctive anatomical landmarks and are easy to locate on the master cast. And then the primary cast is removed and the master cast is placed and adjusted so that the carbon marker contacts the additional reference points in the same manner as it does in the primary cast. So with this we complete surveying. We have discussed about what is surveying and what is a surveyor, how is surveying done and what is tripoding. And also talked in brief about undercuts and guiding planes. If you have any doubts, queries or suggestions, do let me know in the comment section down below or you can contact me on my Instagram handle. And any kind of feedback from you guys is highly appreciated. If you like this video, don't forget to show your love and give it a big thumbs up. And please do subscribe to the channel to keep me motivated to create more of such kind. And also share it with your friends who might need it. And that's all for today. Bye bye. Take care and get vaccinated. See you until next time. Thank you.